Hi, this is Peter from PDV. Today, I'm going to talk about the mesoscopic simulation in VSIM. Let's start. You might be familiar with the big microscopic models made with VSIM software on one hand and with the smaller microscopic models on the other hand. And meso is somewhere in between, not as big as the microscopic models and not as detailed as the microscopic models. Mesoscopic simulation in VSIM works with individual vehicles as microdas, but they are not visualized. So how does the mesoscopic simulation work? I mentioned it works with individual vehicles, but uses a simplified car following model. It is event based, which means that data is not updated with every time step, but only at so-called events, the times when changes occur in the network or vehicle behavior, in contrast to the microscopic models, which run with high temporal resolution, where that is updated like 10 times in a second, as a simulation updates only at events like vehicle entering the node, or if there is a change in the traffic signal state. This leads to the highest advantage of the mesoscopic model compared to the microscopic one. It is way much faster and that allows you to save computation time or to work on a larger model than usual for micro or both. You see, there are just three parameters for the core following models. The speed, reaction time in seconds, and the stencil distance. All this together determine the gaps between vehicles and thus the capacity on a link. Let me switch into VISM quickly and let me show you the driving behavior settings. So if you go through base data and then to driving behaviors, it opens the list. And when you double click on the driving behavior you use in the model, you will find several tabs in the dialog and one of these is for MESO. And you can find here the meso reaction time and the meso standstill distance as well. The simplification of meso compared to micro also means that the lane changes do not happen anywhere but at the end of a meso node only. Furthermore, accelerations and decelerations are neglected. You, as a modeler, have the choice of two speed models either link-based, where all vehicle, vehicles become the same desired speed on a particular link, or vehicle-based, where each vehicle becomes an individual desired speed. The real driving speed is then a result of all interactions. When I switch back to my model and I open a dialog for the link, then on the meso tab, you can find the meso speed model and you can choose between vehicle base and link base. If you choose link base, you can define the speed here as well. I already mentioned one advantage of the meso model. It is the computation speed, which allows you to handle large models. The second important one is the ability to run parts of the model at a microscopic uh, level. You can define sections in the same and everything inside a section can be simulated microscopically, inclusive of the visualization. So let's take a look into VSIM. If you go to simulation and parameters, then you can choose if you want to simulate in micro or in a meso. And if you want to do some hybrid simulation, then you would need to define a section. So let's find the sections in uh, the network object menu and then define a section. I will need a few more points there. And let's say I want to have this part of the network simulated microscopically. So I go back to simulation parameters and I switch to meso already and I activate this section for microscopic simulation. I confirm and then when I run the simulation 
after a few seconds when the vehicles arrived uh, to this intersection, I will see vehicles moving, but only in this microscopic section, but because only this part is simulated microscopically and visualized. So that's the easy way how it can be done. Wait a minute. I can also run a mesoscopic simulation in VISUM. So what's the difference? Indeed, VISUM offers a mesoscopic level of simulation with simulation-based assignment. Both software programs use the same theoretical background for the mesoscopic simulation, the work of Mahut. But there are a few differences. VISUM calculates fractions, VISUM with all wall vehicles only. That can make it easier for VISUM to converge, at least in some specific use cases. On a VISM allows vehicle activated signal control so detectors can be used and dynamic control can be utilized. On a VISM can do vehicle based evaluations. VISM uses link speed, VISM offers two speed models. One of them is vehicle based and allows temporary, specially defined speed reductions. VISM calculates the Q lengths for links. VISM does not work with Q counters in MESA. And regarding the visualization, VISM can visualize replayed trajectories in a simplified way. VISM by default does not visualize vehicles, but can do that during the simulation in the diagnostic mode. Both software can do hybrid models, but not the same way. VISUM can do micro background with meso sections, and VISUM can do meso background with micro sections. There are special network objects in the mesoscopic simulation. Meso edges or the edges between nodes or inside nodes as meso turn edges. You, as a modeler, do not create edges, they are defined through the nodes. Meso lanes represent the lanes on meso edges. Meso network nodes, these are needed to build a meso graph and run the simulation. In parallel, you need nodes for the dynamic traffic assignment. A lot of nodes in VISIM can cover both DTA and meso, but for some use cases, the nodes for meso differ from those for DTA. A typical example is a roundabout where you are exactly right with one node around it, but MESO requires nodes for each entry and exit. MESO turns are the MESO edges within the MESO node, and MESO turns conflicts, these are used to set MESO critical gaps. The priorities are always set through conflict areas in MESO. Let me go back to VISM and show you a few things. So this is how it can look like if you import a microscopic model into VISM and all necessary nodes are in the model already. So this is one big segment node. Let me just convert it to a polygon one so we can see also the other nodes which are here. Let me select them and select the big one. All these small highlighted nodes are used for MESO. So what is it used for? You can see in the quick view here where the use for MESO is on. So these are the small ones which are needed and you get them automatically if you import from a microscopic model. But let's say you create your model from a scratch and you do not have this model, these nodes, like right now I deleted them. So what you can do then, this offers the option if you go to the context menu uh, in the network editor when you selected nodes here in the network objects window, then you can find here the option create meso network nodes. And when you click on it, it takes a few seconds and then you get a message how many of them have been created. <clears throat> there might be some other informations or warnings, but by the end, you get a bunch of new nodes which are used for the mesoscopic simulation. And you see VISM adds the nodes for each entry and for each exit at the roundabout. 
what about all these mesoscopic network objects you have in your model how you can check them uh, you can go in the menu to the list and then to your network and then you can open the list for meso edges or meso nodes or you can go through intersection control and you can open the list of meso turns and meso turn conflicts another way is to open the, the standard list for nodes and within the list of nodes you have a couple of lists couple uh, you have a list of uh, coupled lists and you can see for example the mesoturn conflicts uh, belonging to uh, a certain node Okay, let me go back to my presentation. There are a few attributes that determine the conflicts at intersections. First, meso follow up gap. It determines the maximum capacity of a subordinate flow within a node as long as there is no traffic on a route that leads to a conflict. Please note that the follow up gap only becomes effective if it's greater than the temporal distance between two successive vehicles that has been defined in the core following model and it is a link attribute the second one is maximum waiting time period after which a vehicle waiting at the node entry enters the node from a minor flow direction even if the time gap in the major flow direction is too short this way a minimum number of vehicles of the minor flow direction get to enter the node despite the heavy traffic in the major flow direction the default here is 120 seconds and now we have the critical gap the mesocritical gap uh, defines the temporal distance between two successive vehicles in the major flow that a vehicle in a minor flow needs to enter the node when defining values for the mesocritical gap you can refer to established manuals such as uh, HCM. The mesocritical gap is a conflict driver attribute. You can edit its value also in the mesoturn conflict list or in the nodes mesoturn conflicts couple list. Right, let's switch to Wisdom uh, again. And when I select the link in my model and I double click it, it opens the dialog for link and here in this dialog you can find the tab meso and here is the place where you can find the the value for meso follow up gap if you go through base data to driving behaviors and go to the meso tab you can find a meso maximum waiting time here defined and if you open the list of conflict areas then yeah, you can also find uh, the parameter which is called mesocritical gap for all correspondent conflict areas in your model. There's one more thing I would like to mention if you go through help and uh, PDV Wisdom help. It opens the online help of Wisdom. And when you look for node control and mesoscopic simulation, then you will find the all the explanation but you will also find here a table with default or recommended values for critical gap and follow-up gaps for different types of directions for merging of viewing areas you can set a merging penalty which is a mesonode attribute the value in seconds is added to the minimum meso gap between two consecutive vehicles on the same exit line if they come from different entry lines or entry links this can be used to calibrate the loss of capacity at a viewing section let me show you that quickly in wisdom so if you select one node you double click it to open the dialog for node then if it's used for mesoscopic simulation so if this option is active then you can also enter the meso penalty here in this dialog. Besides the standard evaluations you use with a microscopic modeling like 
links evaluation or network performance. There is one more evaluation dedicated to meso simulation only, that is called meso edges evaluation. You do the setup in a standard way by defining the from time to time and intervals, nothing special is needed. People often ask if the results of a meso model differ from a microscopic one. The answer is yes, because of simplified car following model, simplified lane change model, neglected acceleration, deceleration, and other parameters for node control. Another frequent question is how to ensure correct results in MESO. Well, avoid short edges, check MESO parameters, and use microsections for sensitive areas. Let me show you another model in VISIM, very simple one. Um, when I start the simulation, you can see that on the top, the whole link is in a microscation, so it's uh, simulated microscopically. In the middle, just part of the link is simulated microscopically. And on the bottom, you see that the whole link is uh, simulated microscopically. And when I speed up the simulation to come into the end, at the end, you can see the results. Um, with the, with the colors on links, here it's the density, they are consistent. They are not the same, not identical, but they are consistent. In general, VISIM does not visualize the meso vehicles, but there is a way how to show them for the backing purposes. So you can start VISIM in the diagnostic model mode and uh, switch on the visualization of the meso vehicles. Please note that this functionality is available as a prototype only, so the visualization is not perfect, but it gives you an indication if the model runs as expected or there is a problem. Let me show you that. If you go to the place where you have your recent installation and if you go into the EXA folder, then you will find the file diagnostic exit there. And if you run it, it comes up with this dialog. And in the middle, there's the option start VISM in diagnostic mode. I already did that. And it looks the same. There's just one uh, change in the, in the menu. You will find this additional entry diagnostics. And here on the meso vehicles, you will find the option to show meso vesicles and you can hide or show the meso uh, information for each vehicle. And then if you simulate, then you see the moving vehicles. So it's a prototype, it's not perfect. You can see also some uh, graphical glitch time to time, but it gives you an impression if your model works as expected or not. And as I said, you can also see some information for each vehicle there. The MESA model also has a few limitations. This means that some functions cannot be used, such as cyclists or peaceful pedestrians, and some functions are only permitted in the micro section, such as travel time measurements or calculation of Bosch emissions. Thank you for your attention.